We're going to talk about using generative AI to turn unstructured into structured data. So first, a little bit about us. So we are an IT consultancy. Um, we build custom software for uh, companies, large companies, medium-sized companies. Um, we have more than a decade of experience in the ag industry, but we also do work in finance, manufacturing, retail, and a bunch of other industries that are uh, prevalent here in the Midwest. So we've been doing big data pipelines and analytics for uh, 20, almost 20 years now. So AI and ML is really not, not new to us. Let's see, we do all these things. We're just gonna kick on. So okay, let's talk about why you guys are here. So let's talk about problem statements. So let's say you are a, you know, a medium-sized grower. So you don't have a staff of people. You've got like, you know, your uncle, your brother, and then, you know, like your, you know, younger sister or something working on your farm. And you maybe got 500 acres. So, you know, you obviously want your farm to be profitable. That's getting more and more complicated every year. And every year you have to make a big decision, and that is, what am I going to plant on my farm? What varieties am I going to plant on my farm this coming season? And you can talk to, you know, your, um, you know, your, your dealer, your uh, seed dealer. You can talk to the guy down at the coffee shop. You can talk to a lot of people about it. And you can go out to websites and look at various seed varieties that are sold by some of the companies that are in this room um, and companies that we're all aware of. But what if you don't have all of that time to go through the thousands of varieties of corn and the thousands of varieties of soybeans for that you could pick from? So it'd be great if you could have something else do it. And that something else could be AI. So in the past, we would do something like this with like a reporting solution. So we'd be using a database, we'd be running queries and try to you know find a seed variety that has a particular um, you know germination time, a particular expected yield, price, etc. But that's not the data you're going to get. If you go out to these websites, if you go out to um, you know the Corteva website or the uh, DeKalb website or any other. Um, seed manufacturer, you're going to see PDFs. You're going to see PDFs full of text that are selling you on why to pick that variety. You're going to see videos, you're going to see images, and again, back to our original problem statement, people don't have the time to go through all of that stuff. So here's an example of some of these. So, you know, there's a Pioneer seed up there. It's got, got like a little diagram, and all that looks cute, but I, I can't programmatically find that. So I'd have to look through hundreds of those to look at those numbers. And then, you know, on the top left, you have like a little chart there. It's an image with some bars on it. Again, looks really pretty, but I mean, after I look at the 50th one of those, I think it's going to look less pretty. So <clears throat> nobody has the time for this. So what do most growers do? They plant the same thing they planted last year because it worked. <laughs> and, you know, maybe they'll make a slight adjustment. Maybe they'll plant something different in a corner of their field to try it out. Maybe they'll take that recommendation that their seed agent has been pushing on them for the last, you know, three meetings. But mostly they're probably going to just go with what they did last year, as long as it was somewhat reasonable. So that's fine. But those growers are getting pressure from the market, just like large growers. They need to increase yields. They need to drive down costs. So just doing something that's kind of okay isn't going to be okay for long. So... What can we do about it? So um, we're not selling a product. I'm not trying to get you to buy our software package. I'm not trying to get you to um, go buy our corn. I'm not trying to get you to buy our, you know, um, buy our drones or our equipment, anything like that. We're a software consultancy, so we build custom software for other companies for hire. So that software is owned by those companies we build it for. But we do like to sometimes build software for fun, so that's what we did. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take all those PDFs. We're going to run them through um, a Gen AI solution. In this case, we chose Amazon Bedrock. You could choose ChatGPT. You could choose Meta's Llama. You could choose one of a thousand other different um, AI platforms. Uh, we're going to put it in good old Excel because if it worked in 1996, it can work today. So we're going to stick that in Excel, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and just profit. So uh, it's step step four there. So um, another alternative title is we could use multi-model models to modify messy messaging means more money 
And if you can say that three times as fast, you get a free notebook at our booth. Um, all right, so what are we going to do? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take all of these PDFs. We're just going to dump them in a folder. Great. And then we're going to go through, and we're going to have a Gen AI solution called Retrieval Augmented Generation, if you've heard that term before. It's usually abbreviated RAG. Uh, scan these, pull in all this data, and index it. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do this. And this code is hard to read, but this is a bedrock um, program that prompts a, uh, a model. In this case, I think we're using anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic yes, anthropomorphic uh, Claude 3. So this prompts Claude 3 and tells it what we want to do. So let's say you've got you know, your, your nine-year-old nephew who wants a summer job, and you're like, okay, here's a stack of PDFs. I want you to go through every single one of these PDFs and put in this, the emergence information and the relative maturity of every single one of these crops in these 1,000 PDFs into this spreadsheet, and I'll see you in three weeks. <laughs> That's basically what we're doing, but without making our family hate us. So here's a, an exploded view of that prompt. So we're going to... Tell chat, we're going to tell the, the AI uh, model, the LLM, the large language model, generate a JSON compliant object for me. So JSON is just a, a file format for structured data um, that has these values filled in based on crop spec sheet images I have given you. And then we have a little a template here. So crop name, this should be the name of the crop, relative maturity, this should be the relative maturity of the crop present, represented as a number, not a string. Sometimes on the spec sheet is represented as a number followed by RRM and may not have a clear label. Emergence, this should be the emergence or growth emergence value represented as a number, not a string. So you can see here I'm kind of describing this in a very human-friendly way. And I say at the bottom, this is my kind of uh, asterisk, uh, kind of get out of jail free card here. If you ever can determine one of the values, well, use the value unknown, only respond with the JSON object, no information before or after. I don't want any BS, just data. So then if we do this, we get this out. So you can see little examples here where um, for a given PDF, we generate this little JSON snippet that has crop name, relative maturity, and emergence, crop name, relative maturity, and emergence. Then we generate a folder full of these. So then we can just stick it in Excel and filter it out. So great. A couple of quick roadblocks here, though. First one is most of these PDFs aren't just full of text. They're actually full of images. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to convert all the PDFs to images, and then send the images to our Gen AI solution, because it can actually read an image just as well as PDF text. We do that, we get this Excel sheet you see down here at the bottom, and now I can just go and pick, give me a crop with this relative maturity, and this emergence, or this range of emergences, or this range of relative maturities, across all the crop varieties, across all of the different seed companies, and I can do all of this in an afternoon, which is definitely worth it if I can increase my yield this year. So there's one other roadblock I'm going to really briefly touch on right before I run out of time. And that is sometimes, um, like humans, AI solutions get confused. They're just like, I, I don't know what to make of this. And you could actually use a strategy called um, few shot, which is kind of similar when you're talking to a person, you say, I want you to do this. For example, if I say this, you do that. If I say this, you do that. So in this case, we're saying, if you see this picture, this image, give me back this information. And if you see this Im image, I expect this other information. So you're just giving it some ex specific examples to kind of train it, so it knows what to look for. So. This is a, a real brief overview, just kind of an example of how to make it a little bit more approachable to people. Um, we have a booth. It's right there on the corner, right behind this uh, gator uh, kind of police car looking thing behind you. Um, feel free to stop by. You know, we'd love to chat, um, help solution with you, and, uh, and meet the rest of our team. Uh, thank you very much.